Composition, composition. Okay, sorry, run the intro. What's going on guys, Trav White here. Welcome back to my channel where we cover how to create amazing content, how to take your pictures to the next level, how to grow your personal brand, and how to look good doing it. All right, so today's video, we are going to talk all about composition tips to take better pictures. Now, these are tips that are going to come in handy when you're out collaborating, when you're out on a photo shoot, when you're out having other people who are taking photos of you, you can use these composition tips to level up your pictures and take them to the next level. The easiest way is just to dive into my computer and show you, so let's go do that right now. So, what we wanna look for here, and we're gonna run through some really fast composition tips. What is composition? Composition is the uh, uh, aesthetic in which you take an image. So, let's just start here at the bottom at the rule of thirds. So, the rule of thirds. This is a rule you won't just see in photography, you'll see this in design classes, you'll see this in um, cinema, in movies. After I explain this rule to you, you're gonna start to see it all over the place. This is just a way of keeping everything balanced. And I'll show you what I mean. So when you're taking pictures, you're going to see these grid lines on your camera. There's one, there's two going from top to bottom and two going from left to right. And this is dividing your image into thirds. So if you can place the important pieces of your photos on the third lines, then the image is gonna look more aesthetic. In this picture, I wanted to place my subject, who is my friend Cadre, I wanted to place him on the third line going up and down. And I wanted to try to get as this third line going from left to right, I wanted to try to get it as close to his face as possible because I want enough happening above that the image doesn't look too tight and it doesn't look like I'm, I barely got it in. You see how this just feels more off and then when I expand it out, it just feels nicer. And it's, you know, people notice symmetry. Even if they can't explain this rule of thirds, they can feel it. They can come across a picture and it just feels right. Now, what the heck does this have to do with growing your Instagram? Well, you want to follow a lot of these composition tips when you're creating your feed. When you're posting, you want your feed to look aesthetic. If it follows a lot of these composition tips, then your feed as a whole is going to look nicer. So when people go to your page and they see you know, your grid, your first 9 to 12 photos, which is essentially like your Instagram business card saying, like this is sort of the portfolio I'm putting together, showing what I'm about, my message, this is, my, this is who I am, then people will make a decision on whether they wanna follow you or not. So number one is rule of thirds. Let's go back, uh, here's another one. This is my friend Ryan, I shot this in New York City. So you can see the rule of thirds. I, move, I put the third line right across his face because I wanted it, it, it just looked better than if it were down here and this is just this just feels a little bit more off balance. You could argue though that this is actually really cool because the third line is more in the foreground. You're, we're using this bottom third line. It's a creative choice. At the end of the day, it's about your own personal perspective and your unique take on it. So this was how I wanted to compose the shot because I still have a foreground. He his the third line is across his face and there's beautiful bokeh blurry buildings in the background. That's another example of rule of thirds. Let's move on to perspective shift. So when I first started doing this set of photos, I was standing, you know, right in front of this, these benches here, and I was standing up tall and I was shooting downward, but I wasn't really liking all the people in the background and all this distractions everywhere, and I felt like this angle just wasn't the best. So if you're ever in shooting out with another influencer, you're you're out with a friend, you're trying to create content, and you're shooting from one angle and you're just not getting the shot you want, try switching perspectives, try kneeling, try getting from a new, so I knelt down, now I'm, I'm parallel with these benches, and I decided to shoot this way. Now all the people that were walking are covered up behind him. My buddy Ryan is taking up the majority of the frame, and it's a more, it's just there's so much more depth in this picture, right? There's foreground depth, background depth, not a lot of distraction. Your eyes gravitate 
towards the subject versus the other photo, your eyes might gravitate towards him, but you notice a lot of other things and there's just more distraction and that, that subtle difference makes a difference between a good photo and a great photo. Let's look at the next one, which are leading lines. Now, leading lines are exactly what they sound like. They're lines that lead to your subject. You can find these all over the place. You can find them in nature, you can find them in architecture. If you shoot more than people, then you can shoot like a landscape. You can have leading lines leading to a waterfall or leading lines you know, leading to a car or something like that versus a subject. But I imagine that most of you guys will be shooting people or having people shoot you. So these are things to look for when you're walking around on like, hmm, what can, wh how can I get a good picture? Oh, hey, here's a really cool fence and it has leading lines. And if I stand here, it'll lead to my subject. Another one, so th if, if this was leading lines from the background to the foreground, you can also lead lines from the foreground to your subject. So my subject in this, in this picture is, you know, on the right third. So we're following multiple rules of composition. Now we're having, we're putting our subject on the third. We're having a foreground leading line leading to our subject. So we're starting to stack these rules and it's just, it makes the images look really cool and you can do it with two lines. So I was, this is on the Manhattan Bridge in New York. You can have leading lines on the left and leading lines on the right. And they're going, and they're basically, you can just see them pointing at where you wanna look. So that's what leading lines do. They drive and guide people's eyes to exactly where on the photo you want them to look. The next one is pattern interrupts. A pattern interrupt is when you have a lot of the same thing and then just your eyes are drawn to wherever the interruption is. And FYI, this photo is not mine. I found this online, so credits to whoever the photographer is. Uh, here's another pattern interrupt, and it doesn't ha just have to be textures, it can be colors as well. Uh, so we have a lot of the same patterns going on here with this blue, and then an interrupt with a totally different color outfit. And then here's another one as well with a lot of the same pattern, and then your eyes gravitate towards the interruption. So that's another really cool rule of composition. And as you can see, they put the subjects on a third line as well. And they tried to put it where the third lines cross. So this is following multiple rules of composition. Let's look at the next one, a frame within a frame. This was a shot I took for my buddies and I was just taking pictures and they had a ring light out. And I thought it would be really cool to use the ring light as a frame to light the people and then also shoot through the ring light and, and, and frame everybody. Uh, so that's using natural objects as frame within frame. That's another really cool way to make your photo stand out. Here's another example. So it's a wedding I shot and as you can see, I placed the bride and groom on a third line. So following that rule of composition and then I also framed them with these two pillars right here. So this was at the kiss at their wedding and uh, the light was beautiful, it was an amazing wedding, and I framed them right in between these pillars, and it just came out really nice. I, I was really pleased with that one. So that is frame within a frame, and here's another one in New York. I framed my buddy Ryan on this stoop to get one of those classic New York stoop shots. The next one, and this picture, it has a ton of different composition tips, so I, I keep coming back to it, but this is, Foreground. So what I mean by foreground is just adding something into your foreground to add depth to your photo. So I used this bench to add to my foreground and it just creates a really 3D effect. And as you can see, I was using um, my 24 to 70 lens at shooting at 68, so it's a zoom lens and I was shooting it at 68 millimeters. I had the aperture as wide as I could get it. This lens only opens to 2.8, but it was enough because there's plenty of distance behind the subject to blur everything out. So he's far enough away for whatever's in the background is far enough away from the subject to blur everything out. And I had my shutter speed at 1 500th. So if he moved at all, I was catching everything. And my ISO 100 for a crisp, sharp image. So that was following the rule of foreground. And this was a shot that I did for a wine company and I wanted to get creative with it and kind of use my dog as, you know, 
just people love dogs, so <laughs> I just wanted to use it. I wanted depth to this image. I wanted my subject in the middle, which was Lana, my puppy, and then I wanted to use the armrest of the couch in the foreground and the Christmas tree in the background. So now I give, I'm giving the, an, a really nice 3D effect. And if you see, like, let's take out the foreground, right? Let's just, let's just have the background and you can kind of see, it's still a cool picture, but when you just add that element to it, it it's really cool and it just does, it makes the picture look nice. So that's another way to level up your photos. The, the next one is to have a contrasting background, right? This is when your subject or the clothing, the color they're wearing pops off of whatever's in the background. So this was just a really gray wall and I had on, you know, this sort of brownish colored, mustard colored sweater and jeans and it just popped off the wall because everything pops off gray, right? And then uh, this next example was coming back to this picture, everything is blue and then the subject pops off just by contrasting backgrounds. So those are all of the tips. But there's also two mistakes that you can make that I want you to avoid. The first mistake is background interference. And what I mean by that is you see this leading line that was that I, I was initially trying to shoot, but then it kind of just cuts right through his head and it looks like it looks like part of the background is just growing out of his head. Now, most people might not see that and be like, oh my gosh, this is growing out of his head. This is a horrible photo. Most people look at this be like, ah, oh, it's cool. But when you have sort of like a trained eye to look for something like that, it just feels better when there's nothing cutting off the head of your subject. So the leading line is no longer running through the head. I shifted perspectives, this number two, remember? And I changed the angle that I was shooting at and so I got, so I didn't get this background running through his head. The other mistake is to not chop off limbs. So if I was cropping this image, right, and I wasn't really paying attention and I just did something like that, and when you chop off a limb at the joint, it kind of makes the person look like they're missing a limb. And it's really, if, you, if you're gonna chop, if you're gonna crop off uh, parts of the body, make sure to kind of come like in the middle between joints. So between the hip and the knee could be an option, but obviously this is not making the photo better it's making it worse the way I'm cropping it because it's not following the rule of thirds. So coming back to the rule of thirds, that's probably how I would crop this. Another thing is make sure that the dead space you have in an image, if you're gonna if you're gonna place a subject like right or left of center, make sure that the dead space is wherever they're looking. Because if I were to swap, and I know I'm going a little off track, but if I were to swap it over here, it just feels different because they're looking this way and you want to know like what's going on over here but the image is showing this part if you just crop it in the direction that they're looking then you can see but you see how i cropped his ankle right here and it made it look like he doesn't have any feet and it could have also been the shot but uh, that's about as far down as i can get so keep that in mind when you're shooting not to crop feet off that's a really common mistake that a lot of um, people make so just be careful not to chop off limbs don't crop at the joints or it makes them look like they're missing a limb. That's everything, guys. And man, I uh, tried to get through that as fast as I could. I know this video probably ran on a little bit longer than my other ones, but that's okay. Thank you so much for watching. This was a fun video for me to make. I love, this is one of my favorite subjects. All right, I'm done. We'll talk to you, see you in the next video. Bye.